Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanna to talk to you about implied odds and really teach you how to use this properly. Now you might hear a lot of players talk about implied odds or cite implied odds for a reason why they made a play pre-fob or post-fob and usually it's to justify a play that may have looked a little odd. But very few players actually understand how to solve for implied odds and actually how to apply it correctly. So today I wanna to show you how to do exactly those things, show you the actual form Formula, show you the shortcut that I use and go through some examples with you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So hopefully if you're watching this video, you already fully understand pot odds. And if you don't, pause here, I'll leave a link in the description box. You can go watch a full video that I made breaking down those. But essentially, if you're facing a bet or a raise in a given situation, you look first at the pot odds you're getting compared to the equity or your chance of winning this hand. And if you have enough equity, then you continue. But if you don't, then the next thing you look at are your implied odds. So essentially, implied odds are looking at how much money you need to make in order to offset the incorrect pot odds you're getting right this moment. So if you're not getting proper pot odds right this moment, you say, okay, well, do I have enough implied odds? Do I expect that I can make enough money in the future in order to justify this slightly negative call right this moment? That's essentially the way that we use implied odds in poker. All right, so let's first start by breaking down the actual formula for implied odds, and here it is. It's one divided by EQ times C minus P plus C. And yes, this is pretty scary and a little bit ugly, but to break down all the variables, C is how much you have to call right this moment, P is the size of the pot after your opponent bets, and EQ is your hand's equity versus their betting range. The answer you get from solving this is how much you need to win on future streets to offset getting immediately incorrect pot odds. And just for the record, if you get a negative calculation here as a result, it means that you already had correct pot odds to continue in the first place. So while this formula will give you the very correct and precise answer, I find it personally a little unwieldy and very tough to use in real time. Fine for doing off-table calculations, not so good for making real-time estimates. So what I use instead is the gap ratio method, and this is very, very simple. So take a simple spot where there is a $10 pot, your opponent bets $10 into it. You're getting two to one pot odds, and you need 33% equity to justify continuing. Again, if that makes no sense, watch that pot odds video in the description box. But say in this situation, you think that you have maybe a 25% chance of winning, which means you need three to one pot odds to justify. So you're getting two to one, you need three to one, this is not a good spot for you. But we can consider implied odds and this ratio gap method is very simple. What is the gap between those two ratios? Well, you have three to one, you have two to one, the gap between three and two is exactly one. Multiply that by the bet you're facing of $10 and you need to make 10 extra dollars on the next street to justify continuing right here. If you can, awesome, continue. If you can't, well, maybe not. So essentially very, very simple. Look at the gap between the ratio you're getting, the ratio that you would need to be getting based upon your estimated chance of winning, multiply that by the bet you're facing, and you're good to go. Much, much simpler. So now that you understand the methodologies and formulas for implied odds, let's do a couple of practice examples together using the Poker Math and Preflop workbook and go through some of these together. All right, so let's flip over to page 112 and go through this top one together. So the prompt is you estimate that you have 8% equity if you call their bet right now, and we're gonna complete this table as if we had faced each of these bet sizes into a pot of 100. So those bet sizes are 30, 50, or 80, and again, they're betting into us into a $100 pot on king nine, five, three, rainbow. So let's do this first one together and hack through it. And just for the record, in the digital format in the ebook, you can actually write directly into the ebook. This took a tremendous amount of time to do, but I hope that it makes it easier for you to get your answers in here, save it, not have some, you know, extra template to have to deal with. I'm hoping that this is actually a really nice feature and you get a lot out of it if you end up picking up the ebook. So anyway, they bet $30 into a pot of 100. The percentage of that pot, obviously 30 divided by 100 is 30%. We know that we're getting slightly better than four to one pot odds here. So our equity requirement would be 19%. And how much more do we need to make to justify getting involved here, right? We have 8% equity, but we actually need 19% based upon the size we're facing. So we need 
need to make some or be able to make some extra money on the river in order to justify getting involved right this moment. So let's talk about how to solve this. We're going to use both the formula using a free tool that I have on my site. This is an implied odds calculator and let's just do this. It has the formula baked into it so you can do it by hand with the formula we discussed earlier or just plug everything into here. So we have 8% chance of improvement. The per current pot size after they bet so $100 pot plus their $30 bet is 130 and how much do we have to call? Well we have to call 30 to get involved. So the equity calculator tells us right here that we need to make 215 in order to justify getting involved right this moment. So can we make $215 on the river to justify getting involved? That also means do both of us have deep enough stacks where you know reasonably we could make 215 more and is there a decent chance that we get paid off the times that we do hit? Because if we're not going to get paid off the 8% of the time that we improve then is this really going to be that good? So again this is how we can start bridging the answers from the work we do in the workbook to the actual lines that we take, thinking about the stack sizes, thinking about the actual payoff potential, and then making smarter decisions from there. And just for the record, we can proof all of this with the included online answer key. So page 112 right here, we're doing this top example. So again, $100 pot, $30 bet from them. We see that's a 30% of the pot bet. Yep. 19% equity requirement. Yep. And we need to make 215 more. Yep. So we got everything correct here. But you may be wondering, how do we kind of factor this into the shortcut that we discussed earlier? Well, remember the shortcut in this situation would be looking at the gap between the ratios. So we're getting about four to one on a call here. And based upon our 8% equity, we actually need something closer to 11 to one. So the gap between that 11 and the four is what? 11 minus four equals seven. Seven times the bet we're facing or $30. So seven times 30 equals 210. And that's pretty darn close to the 215 required. You know, if we had gotten decimal specific we may have gotten 215 exactly, but you see that that is a very, very usable shortcut, pretty darn simple to do, and also something that's going to make your life much, much easier in real time for estimating the required implied odds in given situations. All right, so we're not going to do this entire page, but let's do the next one down just to make sure we have the right process. So let's just say that they bet 50 into that $100 pot. Well, percentage of the pot would be 50%. Our equity required, we're getting exactly three to one. So that would be a 25% equity requirement. And how much more do we need to make? So let's just eyeball it real quick. We're in a situation where we're getting three to one. We need 11 to one. So eight times the $50 bet would be about 400. So let's quickly pull out that calculator that we talked about earlier and update all the numbers. So again, $50 bet, $100 pot makes 150 current pot size. How much do we have to call? $50. And the final answer is four and a quarter. So pretty darn close. Again, that estimate is totally, totally usable using the ratio gap. So hopefully this kind of helps you understand how to quickly visualize this stuff, make some simple estimations. And yes, this is one of those extra ways that you can use the ratio form of pot odds. I know a lot of people don't love the ratio form. They tend to skip right over to the percentages and you see the ratio can actually be quite helpful, especially when we start factoring things like implied odds. So that's why I don't automatically skip the ratio method of pot odds, even though I know a lot of players like to do that. All right, so I want to do another exercise with you, but this time from the facing raises section, because we can also use implied odds, not just when facing bets, but also when facing raises. And we're gonna flip over a few pages to this section of the workbook, and we're gonna do this bottom one together, and we're gonna do the 40,000 raise, and we'll talk about how to do it. So the prompt is, you estimate that you have 15% equity if you call their raise right here. Complete this table if you bet 10K into 14K and faced each of these possible raise sizes. And by the way, these are total raise sizes, so total raised to 20k total and 40k total and 90k total. 20k of course would just be a little min raise but for this example I want to go through the 40k one together and this is helpful whether you have the workbook and you're trying to figure out exactly how to do the exercise just in case the preliminary chapter didn't quite explain it well enough and also if you're just looking for the general process and some extra exercises and reps together. So in this situation let's do the 40k one again they raised to 40k total so the percentage of 
the pot is what? Well, if we remember the formula for figuring out what a pot size raise would be, it's three times the bet plus everything that's left over. So three times the 10K bet is 30K, and then we're gonna add in the leftover 14K original pot, because remember we bet 10 into 14. So 30 plus 14 is 44K would be a pot size raise. And 40K is clearly pretty darn close to that. So let's just say that it's a 91% of the pot. Our equity requirement, well, we're almost getting exactly two to one. So let's just say that it's two to one in this situation. Equity requirement, of course, would be 33% if that's the case. And let's then prove how much more we need to be able to make on the river in order to justify calling here. Because again, we need 33% equity. We expect we only have 15. We need to be able to make some extra money on the next street. Otherwise, this call would not be particularly good. So if we pull out the same calculator we used earlier, let's do that. We have a 15% chance of winning on the next street. The current pot size, once they raise to 40K total, is 40 plus the 24, so 64K. One, two, three. How much do we have to call? Well, we already put 10 in, so we have to call 30 more in order to get involved here. Perfect. And what do we have? So we need to be able to make at least $106,000 on the river in order to justify getting involved. And if we pull out the answer key real quick, we are on what? Page 115. We're on the bottom section. 40k raise. So again, equity requirements just a little bit under 33, it's actually 32 quick that. And what more do we need to make? 106k, just like we got from the calculator earlier. And then just to show you that you can use the exact same shortcut that we discussed earlier, we can also do the same thing when facing raises. So if you look at this situation, again, they raised a 40k total, that gives us roughly 2 to 1. And of course, this isn't exactly 2 to 1, right? That's why this number is 32% instead of exactly 33.3, because they only raised a 91% of the pot instead of exactly 100% of the pot. So sure, it's not exact, but it's very, very usable. And in real time, we're definitely going to be closer to estimating 2 to 1 than, you know, exactly 91% percent of the pot with 32 percent equity required again being close is totally totally good when that shot clock is running and you have a limited amount of time to make a legitimate decision and calculation so we're getting roughly two to one given the 15 percent equity we have we need roughly six to one again not perfect but totally usable and then the gap between six to one and two to one is what? Six minus two equals four. Four times the 30K that we need to call is 120K, and that's pretty darn close and usable to the 106K exact precise answer. So again, we can use this exact same methodology both when we're facing bets and also when we're facing raises. And if you ever get an answer that looks weird and negative, well, that means you had proper pot odds in the first place, making your life that much easier. So you're not required to make any any future money on future streets, whereas when you have an incorrect amount of equity to the equity required based upon the bet you're facing, then you really need to be focused on making more money on future streets, and implied odds help you know exactly how much more at a bare minimum you need to be able to make on future streets to justify a not great pot odds call right this moment. So hopefully at this point you're seeing this really isn't too scary, right? It may seem a little scary at first. It may seem a little confusing when compared to pot odds. But once you understand the formula, you understand the shortcut, you work through a few examples, it gets much, much easier. And like most things in poker, if you work through a few exercises between sessions, you're going to start to see the patterns and you're going to be able to make quicker and more correct estimations at the table. To continue working on this skill set, you can pick up your copy of the Poker Math and Preflop workbook at splitsuit.com slash pre flop and you can finally make the poker math stick so deeply in your brain that you can automatically make these calculations at the table. A few pages of exercises per day is going to continue to sharpen your poker brain and your overall edge. Again, you can get your copy today at splitsuit.com slash preflop and I really hope you enjoy it. As always, if you have any comments or questions about implied odds, about the workbook, or about anything else, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below, and please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and especially if you learned something. Again, if you need anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there, and happy grinding.